everyone, this is Captain Kaboom, and this is uh, the first episode of a new series that I'm starting, um, and it's pretty much the behind the scenes of my YouTube creation process. So, in this series, I will show you everything I do to make my YouTube videos, and for this episode, I'm going to show you how I do my screen recordings. So, let's uh, go into Chrome here. The screen recorder that I use is Open Broadcaster Software, or OBS, and it is available for both Windows and Mac, um, and it is free and open source, so this is a really good option for you guys. Uh, it's a really good screen recorder. I highly recommend it, um, obviously, unless you're on Linux, because they don't have that. Uh, they don't have it for Linux yet. Uh, but I'm assuming most of you guys are probably on Windows or Mac, so this is... Uh, a great option for you guys. Um, Handbrake is the video conversion software that I use. Open Broadcaster software exports videos in an FLV format as you can see right here. This is the recording that I'm doing right now at this very moment. I'm recording it to my desktop. Um, and so uh, most uh, your most computers probably don't play this natively. You're probably going to need to convert it with Handbrake, so convert it to an MP4 or some video file type that uh, you can edit in your editing program. And so it is, f it is free for both Mac and Windows. Audacity is a really good audio editing program, recording program, um, and so if you want to record your audio separately or do some special voiceovers with effects or anything like that, um, Audacity is great for that. It is also free for Windows and Mac. Um, and then for you Mac users, WaveTap, um, you're going to need that to record your desktop audio. So if you are doing some gameplay and you want to record the game audio, uh, you're going to need to uh, install WaveTap and uh, that will automatically uh, connect with OBS and you can do some good audio recordings with that. So now I will show you the programs. Let's hide this window. All right, so here's OBS. This is what I'm. This is what it's currently recording live right now. Um, and so I'm going to go into uh, the settings here and show you my settings. Um, all right, so general. That's just the language. You can set your language, probably English. Uh, stream type, we are going to skip that because that's for streaming. Output, uh, you probably just want to use the simple output mode. I looked at the advanced settings. There's nothing special in there that you really need to go through. Um, so you can choose your FLV recording path. I have it to the desktop. The video bitrate that I recommend is 9,000 kilobits per second. Um, if you have a lower bitrate, like 2000, then the video will be all blotchy because there will be a lot of compression, and so it'll be lower, lower quality video, but a smaller file size. Uh, I find 9000 to be a good quality, and it's not a, a giant file size. Audio bitrate, 128 is the default. Uh, that's fine for me, and you don't really have to worry about this. For the audio settings, I have my desktop audio device set to WaveTap. Um, it's recording stereo channels. And my mic, I have my built-in input selected here, and I have my microphone connected. Uh, so it's recording the audio from my microphone. Um, so these are the settings for my video. I'm currently recording this in uh, 720p, uh, just because... Um, just to keep this file size smaller and just so that this video uh, it doesn't get all messed up so I'm recording it in 720p you can also record it in 1080p um, when I've recorded Minecraft I'm mostly done uh, 1080p because that's fine when I record Team Fortress 2 on my channel I change that to 720p which is still acceptable for YouTube and HD Common FPS values, um, frames per second, I record 30. I have done a video in 60 frames per second. YouTube does accept 60 frames per second now because of all these new YouTube gamers. And so, um, if you want to record in 60 frames per second and uh, get that high frame rate of your game, you can do that. You're just going to have a larger file size. I find 
30 frames per second to be fine and perfectly uh, acceptable. I find 30 frames per second to be fine, perfectly acceptable, and it looks great for gaming. Um, and uh, you don't really have to worry about the advanced settings. This is just color, space, and range, and whatever. So press OK, and then you would press Stop Recording. Oh, right here, you can adjust your audio levels. Um, you don't really need to worry about this stuff. I'm not even sure what this does. I've never used this at all. I've uh, never had to. So this, you would press Stop Recording and Stop Recording. Um, start and Stop, and it would go to your desktop or wherever you have set it. And so you're going to have an FLV file uh, wherever your file path is. So next, um, we're going to go into Handbrake because you cannot open an FLV file. Um, so I'm, I'm currently recording to this, so I can't put this into Handbrake, but I have this other test recording right here that we are going to convert. So you open Handbrake right here. All right, so here's Handbrake open, and we go to the file that we want. Um, this is the one. We will open th that. Okay, so here we are opening that test video in Handbrake. It's scanning it and opening it. All right, so here we have all these different options. Um, so you've got your file destination here to the desktop output settings. Um, you will probably want to choose MP4. That's what I use. Um, I select the constant frame rate of 30 because that's what my recording, that's what I recorded as the frame rate. And then I have my video codec as H.264, 264. Um, this is a good compressed format. Uh, it makes low file sizes good for YouTube. Whenever you're making YouTube videos, you probably want it in H.264. Uh, for the bit rate, I'm going to set it at 9000 because that's what I recorded it at. If you want um, to have a nice, nicer quality uh, encoding, you can do two-pass encoding. Um, that just means that it'll go through the video and co uh, convert the video uh, twice. It'll pass over it once and do all the conversions and then it'll go through another time and fix any small errors that it made or anything. And so two-pass encoding, it just means that it'll spend more time converting. So if if you want to just leave it and go do something else, you can do two-pass encoding. It'll just take a little longer. Uh, very fast uh, is the preset that I use. Um, you, it, it's, pr it's still really good quality. If you did, like, placebo, super slow, I mean, up to a certain point, I feel like it doesn't, it's not really too much of a difference. So very fast, I just use that, uh, and the quality has been fine. So then you would click Start here to convert the video. So I'm going to, I'm clicking Start right here, and I will get back to you. Oh, well, actually, I was going to say I'm going to get back to you, but this is going really fast because it's just like a five-second video. All right, so it says your handbrake cue is done. You can put down your cocktail. Sounds great. I will. Um, and so then you can X out of handbrake, and uh, you will have your video right here. And so then you can take your uh, MP4 and uh, just stick it in your editing program, and there you go. That is how I record and convert videos. In the next episode in this series, I will be showing you guys... Um, Probably, I think my next thing will be editing. I haven't, I haven't completely planned this out. Um, I'm gonna be going through my editing process and then uh, doing pictures, making thumbnail videos, and then I'm also gonna go through um, YouTube, uh, promoting your video and uh, trying to get those views. I may go into some uh, Blender, possibly animating uh, cool intros. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, make sure to check out my channel for other cool videos, and see you guys later. I hope you learned something.